film, right? You sat through the film. I, I want to know what what was it like for you to watch the movie again, presumably in a, in a really long time on a big screen like this with a crowd of very excited movie fans. It, it was amazing. I'm so glad you all came. It means so much to us, and it does just remind us of something we don't get to experience much, which is just a full theater of people enjoying the movie. Thank you for being here. Especially for a comedy, I just, I love hearing a room full of people laugh. It's just the greatest thing. And um, I think I, I was just so struck by how much I love these performers and um, just watching everybody. <laughs> Greg, for you, I've seen the movie again for the first time. I've been on a big screen for a long time. Yeah, it had been, uh, it had been a bit, and um, I'm so fortunate to see it in this theater, too. This is such an extraordinary place, and, um, and you ought to hear the audience kind of taking the ride with us, literally, figuratively. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, yeah, I just, you know, was, uh, it was just like a flush of uh, emotions uh, coming over me. We, we spent a lot of time rehearsing this movie and a lot of time uh, really getting to know each other. The cast, uh, John and Val were great about kind of getting the cast together and all of us hanging out and doing weird, awkward acting games. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think we, I don't know if we were mining or what, but there was some weird stuff, and we. Uh, but it was great, and you're right. We went bowling, didn't we? I forgot about. Yeah. That. <laughs> so Abigail, when I asked, like, what does it mean to you that that this this theater is almost practically full, and the movie came out 18 years ago, and it is it is still means so much to so many people, and especially for you. Um. Yeah. I mean, I like. Uh, it's, it's kind of crazy because when I was filming this, I, we filmed in 2005, so I was nine years old. I'm going to be 28 tomorrow. And, um, Happy birthday! Thank you. That's true. I was fishing for that, so thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, no, but I mean, I think I auditioned for it though when I was about five. Is that right? It took us so long to get the movie made that I think the first time we saw you, you were five. Yeah. And then, um, it was about three years later that we got to make it. So we were very, we were very worried that Abigail and Paul were going to get too old for the parts by the time we got to make the movie. But yeah, but um, for, but for me, like uh, it's it's one of those um, films where it's still to this day, you know, eighteen. 19, whatever it is, years later, uh, I still get so many people, and the reaction that I get is not just the typical reaction of like, oh, I loved you in that movie, and I, or I love that movie. It's like, oh my God, you have no idea, like, Little Miss Sunshine changed my life. <laughs> I don't know if I can hear or not, but you know what I mean? Like, so, um, and it's, and it's, it's such a visceral response to it that it's, um, you know, always been an, an honor to carry with me. You know, when I was, I was sitting and watching it, because I, I just had to see it on the big screen again, and for so long, it had been probably like 18 years since I'd seen it on the big screen, but the movie is also playing on Hulu, so if you want to watch it again, you can. So, but I did watch it last night because I wanted the prep for it because it had been a long time, and so many things went through, you know, struck me. One of them being is like, wow, this movie is amazing, like legit, it could be released today and it would get probably the same kind of reaction it got in 2006. But also, when it came out in 2006, and when it played at Sundance, it, it was a game changer. It was a game changer for independent movies that this film went up against The Departed for Best Picture, that it made more than $100 million, that everyone on this cast was, it was a, it was a different kind of role for you, for Steve, for Paul, for, for, for Tony, especially for you, but breakthrough performance. Um, do you think that Little Miss Sunshine, if you went through all this, would have been, would have been made today? God, I don't know. It, 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 it's, we were very lucky to kind of ride the, 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 the rise of indie film and kind of be in the right place at the right time. Um, it was barely made in that day. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we had to it took us years to get it made, and 
it finally got turned down by a studio, and then the producer, one of the producers, Mark Turlzog, said, I'll, I'll just fund it myself. Wow. And, and so he did, and then we uh, went to Sundance and were able to sell it. What was that Sundance premiere like? when everybody saw it really for the first time. Do you have any memories of that? Yeah, it was a crazy night. Uh, I, I remember we were at Dackles Theater, yeah. and I was, uh, we were all there, and uh, Steve and I had the day off, and we skied all day long, and we started riding up on this chairlift, and like, think anybody's gonna like this thing? <laughs> I just had no idea. And, uh, and then we show up in the theater, and uh, I remember talking to Alan, and, seeing him look over my shoulder and feeling the oxygen change in the room. And I looked behind me and it was uh, Robert Redford, who I guess sort of runs Sundance. And, uh, <laughs> Alan goes, hi Bob. And uh, so it was a great thrill to meet him. And uh, just the whole evening was, was remarkable. And the, and the reaction, I think John, you were saying before this started, he was, he was saying, you know, uh, it's so fun to see for the first time because there's a lot of surprises in it. You see it, uh, if you've seen it before, you know, it's still a good ride, but it is something uh, to see for the first time. And for that audience of, uh, I don't know, maybe 500 people or whatever, it, they were uh, jumping up and down. It was really, really a fun night. That's crazy that you saw it as like 500 people. I was like, I felt like it was a million. I, I was honestly going to say like a thousand people, but now, like, now they're going to think I'm bullshitting, so I better lower it. I think, I think it was a thousand. I think it's like 1,200. 1, yeah, it was 1, Okay, so 1, somewhere between 500 and a million is yeah, where we were at. <laughs> the, the crux of it. Yeah. What, what made Abigail the perfect olive? Like, why Abigail? Ooh. <laughs> okay. I mean, we did look in every English-speaking country, and I, I, I don't know how many um, you know, audition tapes we went through, but uh, there was just nobody else. And um, I think one of the things that we particularly saw in Abigail was what an incredible listener she was. We saw her, um, I mean, she was in Signs, and she was amazing in that. And then we, we watched her on the Jay Leno show, and she was so, uh, so completely engaged with him, like just totally on his level. And, um, you know, I think she just uh, completely, uh, she was, I think she was, for everybody in the cast, it was like, oh, we're not just like acting with a nine year old. And this is, um, you know, she sort of, I think we all, I mean, I felt, felt like everybody brought, came kind of, you know, with their full game. You know, it was just really uh, incredible, but I think it was partially because we had this nine-year-old who was so, uh, she was really a force. Still is. <laughs> I think you were know, you know, five when you first uh, auditioned, and then when you finally got to roll, it was like three or four years later, what was that like to, to wait so long uh, to, to go from like, Maybe, maybe being in this movie to finally getting in front of a camera for it. Well, uh, I don't want this to sound like that. I mean, when you're five, you don't really remember something that you auditioned no. for. <laughs> like, I mean, four years later, like from five to nine, it's like a little bit way back in the day, you know. Um, <laughs> so. Um, my mom had, you know, said to me, oh, do you remember that movie, Little Miss Sunshine? And I was like, no. <laughs> no? And, and she was like, no, the one where you did like a dance, you know, the, and I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And, um, and, I, and she was like, well, you, you got it. And I, we, well, I don't think I had booked it yet. I think we met at like Nate and Owls, um, which is like this restaurant. Um, Beverly Hills. Yeah. Beverly Hills, yeah. It's really good, by the way. Um, and um, and we went there, and uh, yeah, I mean, when I booked it, it was it was really exciting. But I, it's it's you know it's it's a hard thing to say because you're nine years old. So like, <laughs> what are you you know? Obviously, I wasn't thinking this is gonna be. It was just like doing any other any other job. But I I loved doing it, and I had such a great time with like Greg and with Tony and and. Alan and Paul and Steve and 
You know, we, we, it did feel like just kind of being, nobody treated me like I was the kid on set, which was, you know, I think a really good learning experience for me. Yeah, great. What was it like the first time you read Michael Oren's screenplay? Well, it, it, I at the risk of sounding like the dumbest guy in the room, I will say that I, I read it and I, I did think it was, I liked it, it was good, but I, I didn't find it, um, I didn't know how good it was. Uh, and I think that's partly because, and they don't like compliments, but these guys, you know, I think again, taking the time to enrich all of these performances and for everybody to kind of know their character, um, specifically what they were there to do, how they were interacting with the other actors in there. It, it was as much uh, like doing a play as it was doing a movie. It was like a perfect cross of that. And so I, I really felt like um, it, uh, it had a, you know, a, a very unique kind of special quality in that way. You know, the chemistry among the cast members is just so, so palpable. It's so irresistible. And I hate to use the word, but infectious. Uh, I know the word doesn't really work exactly. anymore. Um, but I would love to hear how you cast the Hoovers, and especially you know, Tony and Steve and Alan and Paul. Well, you know, we just went for actors that we loved, and there was some pressure to use, you know, a, a couple of giant names, and we just felt like, no, no, no. We, we just, we want to create this family, and we really got our first choices in every category. And no one had, at the time, Steve Carell had not done um, The Office, or he had just, he had shot it, but it wasn't out. And 40 year old virgin wasn't out yet. So when we shot the movie, no one knew who he was. And then when we went to Sundance, we were at the airport with him and he kind of got mobbed at the airport for the first time. And he was like, whoa, what is this? But, um, but I, I think, you know, we just, uh, we always felt when we were at the first studio that dropped the film, um, we wanted to cast an ensemble. You know, and I think they kept thinking that they needed this big star for one of the roles. And uh, and so they luckily let go of the movie and let us make it ourselves. And then we got to cast, I think Greg was the only person we ever met with or thought about for that role. And pretty much for everyone, um, it was it was first choice and that was, and we felt so good the first time when we rehearsed for a week and then at the end of the week, we um, did a read through. And I remember how incredible it was to hear them actually read the lines. And it just felt like, oh my God, you know. They're I'm really curious friends. that when you were doing those read throughs, when you're doing that prep and rehearsal, and you're all finding your rhythm, really getting to know your characters, did the screenplay evolve a little from that? Because, like, you're, you're not at all, really. Well, it, it was a great screenplay. It was just built perfectly. But there's lots of little details, like Greg, when he's in the back of the van talking to the police officer, much of that is improvised. You know. One of our favorite lines is sweet sweetness. <laughs> we were just like watching it and going, oh my God. And just all the touches that these guys added. So it was the foundation that was really good, but then you so, put good actors in and they just make it better. And we, we worked on the script when we weren't able to get it made. We did some, we worked with Michael for a while and, you know, for three years, three to four years we were working on it. But in rehearsals, we never, we didn't rehearse the script. We just built the relationships of the family and um, for like a week and he calls it weird things. I don't know what he's saying. Oh, we <laughs> did play dodgeball. Dodge yeah, yeah, they played dodgeball. Oh my God, I forgot about dodgeball. Yeah. And so, you know, when you get hit by a dodgeball by an actor you're playing against, it builds a history, and you kind of, you know, resentment. And so that helps Steve and Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, when you said the sweet, sweet men line, I just. Like I said, I was nine, so I couldn't understand it until like I saw it again when I was an adult, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> what when did you see it? Like, at, at, uh, how old were you when you finally saw it? And really, was able to wrap your head around? Oh, okay, that's what I did. That's why so many people love this movie. 
That's why it got nominated for four Academy Awards and won two. I mean, I didn't, I always liked them. I just didn't understand a lot of the, the jokes in it. Um, <laughs> When, and also Alan was very, I don't know if you guys remember this, but like when we, whenever we would do a screening or something, he was very uh, protective. protective of being like, would say to my mom, can you like bring her out of the theater for the scene when he's talking in the van with, with Dwayne? And, um, and then when uh, we were filming, he actually, whenever you see me with the headphones on, I'm actually listening to, uh, some really dope Kelly Clarkson music. And, um, yeah, and, um, but so, I guess the, I saw it so many times when we were doing press and um, also, you know, being new in the industry, like all my mom's friends and my dad's friends wanted to, let's go see Little Miss Sunshine together, you know, and so I saw it enough times, uh, that I really knew it like backwards and forwards. And so I probably saw it again two or three years ago as an adult. And I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. I get these jokes now. Oh, yeah, that's really funny, you know? <laughs> so, so I was lucky enough to be at the Academy Awards in 2007 when the movie won screenplay and, and for Alan Arkin for supporting actor. But I would love to hear just some of your fond memories of working with Alan, because he's so, so fantastic in the movie. Let's start with you, John. Um, well, the first thing he asked us is how do you work together? He was kind of worried that... Just on a phone call. On a right? phone call. And uh, we originally told him, um, and we explained it, and then, you know, he, he was... We looked at a few actors, and one of our concerns, we love him, but we thought he might be too young. And he loved that. He told that to him. We said he was too virile. Yeah. <laughs> and but you know, out. in rehearsals, he um, we kind of isolated um, Alan and Abigail, and just let them hang out together and play games and do things. Just become, you know, her grandfather. And, and he was just so, you know, that whole popcorn thing that he tosses. On, he, you know, he said, "I got this thing. I'm going to do." That was just his little invention to make her laugh. And he said, wait till I'm not going to do it till the camera's running on her. And then he did it. One of, one of the most touching scenes is, uh, am I pretty? Uh, do, do you remember filming that scene with Alan? I do. I do very well. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a very special memory to me because I, uh, we were, we were like blocking the scene, I guess. And then um, I think we started on my coverage and um, we, we started rolling and I, you know, when I asked him, I started crying a little bit and he was like, oh my God, oh my God, get her mother right away, cut, like cut, <laughs> get her mother, she's crying, like, you know. And I was like, I'm acting. <laughs> And he started laughing, and he was like, "Can you give me a heart attack?" You know, so sweet and so and so funny, and just really like, you know. But that and that's what I really remember is that as much as he was, you know, such a an amazing actor, he was really like. Um, I had actually lost my grandfather a year beforehand, and he was really like treated me like a, a granddaughter, and it was. You know, I get emotional whenever I talk about it because he was, and we still stayed in touch um, up until his his passing. So, yeah, we love Alan. <laughs> you know, what I gotta say about about seeing a movie and then not seeing it again for a really, really long time is that there are things that you that resonate with you today that didn't before because you just live your life and get older and wiser. You have life experiences that make you relate to something deeper. And I had that experience watching this movie now twice in two days. Uh, the Hoovers, they, they are getting by, barely. They are scraping by. They have to, you know, Olive can only order $4 worth of food. You know, um, you know they have to drive to Redondo, which is really the term. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and they're, they're, just, they're just getting by. And I just want to ask, you know, Greg, like, Richard is, like, hanging on by a thread. 
to, to provide and take care of his family and do the right thing. And what were the challenges for you to play a role that has a lot of humor, has a lot of heart, and uh, poignancy? Well, he, he, first of all, he's, he's an insufferable prick in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was all in, man. Uh, uh, but he, but I, uh, I did feel like there's a, a, a redemption for him uh, as the movie goes on. And I think his uh, priorities changed change in the movie and uh, and that again Michael had beautifully laid that tapestry in the, in the screenplay so there really was an arc that was evident there was um, the only change do you remember I was gonna say there, originally we it was right before we started it was like yeah like a week before or maybe yeah. days before I, I what's Tom Cruise right in that movie uh, where, where he plays the sports guy what's Jerry, Jerry McGuire, he writes a mission statement or something. What's that called? Yeah, yeah. It's a mission statement. It's a mission statement. I was <laughs> typing, and I was like, guys, I got this crazy idea. Because in the screenplay, my character was actually not Olive's father. He no. was his he was her stepfather. And it made Alan her step grandfather. And I was like, I was writing these guys. I just, I swear, I really feel strongly that maybe we should reconsider this. And I made a strong, crazy appeal uh, to John and Valor, like, hey, take it easy now. And, uh, <laughs> but we did, we made that, that change. And I was so grateful because it really changed the relationship so much with the one that I have with her. Um, and, and I was glad for that. You know that that uh, they you know we made that adjustment, um, and and it was uh, but the whole thing was you know uh, a, a crazy experience of uh, you know and I felt safe doing that too and, and appealing to you guys because I felt like everybody was just always working towards making the best possible movie we could. But you were right. You were so, and I, I think that when we heard it, you know, we always and we use it as an example a lot in. in just working, on, you know, with the script and with the actors, just or mainly with producers. When uh, you know, we say, just put the act. Let, let's just get the right actors for the parts, and then they'll know what needs to be changed. You know, I mean, just how much when you get somebody who owns the part, and then they know sometimes that they're if if there's a problem, they'll they'll be the ones to really kind of identify those things. I mean, hopefully, we try to get rid of all the problems before we get into the action. I was going to say, you better be yeah. careful how you talk. I mean, I just... No, I know, I know. I, I, I also remember... Not in the, I, I don't... I don't... I did not... I mean, I... I don't I didn't remember. realize that in the original script that you weren't my dad. Good job. Dude, I, I, I have a question. We haven't talked about this. Do you remember how we shot that final pageant dance to a totally different song? Yes, ZZ Top. Uh, yeah. Me all yeah. So yeah. we. I mean, I remember when you guys said, "Oh, we can't get ZZ Top." I was like, "Well, the movie's over. It's a no one's time. This is going to be a failure." And and, uh, and then you guys very smartly shifted gears. And but. you also, you guys also gave me my first iPod, and <laughs> had all of the music like that we had, uh, or I, yeah, whatever playlist. It was like a lot of. Uh, ZZ Top, like Sidney on Stevens, like, um, uh, Bocca, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I became a Debacha yeah. fan because of you guys. Debacha, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, but also, I do have to say one thing about my favorite line that is, uh, to me, is one of the funniest moments in the movie is actually Greg, and then when, when Dwayne has his breakdown, and he, <laughs> I don't know if this was an ad lib or not, but if it was, then you're a genius. Because it's like, He's standing there and he's like breaking down and Greg goes, I'm just a little worried about the time. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I die. What a dick. But also <laughs> but my favorite my, my favorite line. <laughs> that was in the script. Uh, that was in the script. In the script. And I would say, by the way, all the all those characters, the doctor, the nurse, who said, "You are not the only person that had someone die in here today." Uh, all of the 
uh, the, the mechanic just across the board. I mean, I have to say we would show up to these fabulous locations that just felt very correct for what we were shooting, but then they had also just put in these people that were magic. And then the woman who runs the pageant, I mean, she was. Oh. Beth Brand. Yeah. Beth, Beth, Beth. So. Shout out to her. We follow each other on Twitter. I just want to back up a second. So when you were rehearsing the final dance you during the pageant, that was not super free that you were rehearsing to. It was ZZ Top legs or? Give, give me all your loving. Give me all your loving. OK, so what happened that you had to change the song? Well, actually, we were cutting it, and it was just too slow. It just was slow, and it, it, oh. it, it just didn't. And then our music supervisor came, Ann Litt, and Casey RW, DJ. Um, great, yeah. great, Ann Litt. Great. She came to us and she said, what about Super Freak? And we're like, oh god, it's just so on the nose. We can't, we can't use that. <laughs> and then she goes, just, just try it. So we played what we had cut just in the room with, you know, off of a, I don't know what kind of device. Yeah. And, uh, and it just immediately was, it, you know, it was hard to... All, all the spanks, all those things. <laughs> um, she's a very kinky girl. That just was luck. <laughs> and the, but the, you know, the, the breakthrough, it had to, the, the challenge of that dance is it had to be transgressive and it had to upset the audience in the, in the um, pageant, but it couldn't be creepy for audiences in a movie theater. They had to kind of love her for it. And so that was the challenge. And, um, we finally figured out that if we did a strip tease, that would be something that her grandfather taught her. And Nancy Steiner, who was the costume designer, yeah, who's I mean, here tonight. The costumes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll never forget her. I know. Yeah, I know. Great, yeah, those shorts. Um, but she, you know, came up with the tear-off pants, which was just the perfect thing to uh, start the strip teams, and then, you know, we were on our way. And then the, the tie, I mean, they're just, yeah, it was. The layers, the layers of it. Oh, yeah. All right, so, so Abigail, like, like, filming that final scene, how many takes did you have to do? Like, how many days did you have to, to film that scene? I think two days. Day. One, one day? Know, two days of the pageant, so one day kind of. The performance. And then the, the, the performance, and all those are real pageant girls. We, you know, just got people to do what they do, which was incredible because there's an authenticity there that, you know, we could never do. Starkly so. And by the way, I do want to say about those girls and the, like the sweetest, nicest, like we were. I think all staying at, or I was at least staying at that Radisson because of traveling and child labor laws. And yeah, we were at a day's end. I missed child labor laws when I was below 18 and I only could work a certain amount of hours. Bless those days. Um, but, um, <laughs> but those girls were, I will say, like the sweetest girls in the world. So I, you know, but um, yeah, I think that the dance itself only took a day. Less than a day. Yeah, less than a day. And actually, that, remember, do you remember reshooting the ending? Because um, the original ending of the movie was very different. They all drove off from the pageant and they went for a picnic and they they were kind of, uh, you know, remembering grandpa and it was- it a and, and, and you guys hated it. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to do, do like, a, a, like a, a half page monologue about remembering grandpa. <laughs> and John and Val are like, you know, because I think that you guys were getting a little pressure. You gotta shoot this thing. Um, just stand in front of the camera and do remember grandpa. And I'm like, uh, my confidence is waning a little bit right now. <laughs> uh, but at any rate, you, that was such a great adjustment because it needed to, it was so ready to end the way that it did. Exactly. Well, it was just so funny. It wasn't a performance problem. It was just that it was so strange to me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was great performance. We know that. <laughs> But it was so strange to see the family all having a good time together. You know, sitting at the picnic table, it was like, what? And we, we were, it was so, yeah. Didn't we do like four different? No, we did, we tried you guys stealing a trophy. 
Remember you had that. running out stealing yeah, the building. It was just a short look. We did my and then and then we just stopped and said, look, we're gonna cut the movie, we'll think about it. And then when we did the first cut of you guys um, pushing the van for the first time, we were like, oh my god, look at the way they work together. That's the answer. They'll push the van one last time, and from mm. that thing we'll see they become a united family. They work together, they love each other. That, that moment when they all jump on the stage, like all the problems, all the tensions that they had up to that point are gone. They are a family and it's, just, it's such a great arc, you know. Um, but since you brought up the van, this yellow Volkswagen T2 minibus, how did you find this thing? Why yellow and why a VW T2? We all had VW vans at some point in our lives, and uh, <laughs> I think, you know, I mean, and it was in the script. I think it was in the script as a VW, yeah. And and the horns that I I remember our horn getting stuck. And, oh, so I mean, it was something we all kind of related to. But um, the yellow, we were doing tests for what color the car should be, and we shot it in a parking lot with these colored um, boards. And we were, I don't know what color we were thinking originally. We, we looked at a bunch, but we didn't like any of them. And then we looked at the back of the... In the parking lot, there was a yellow car. My eye keeps going to that yellow car. Yellow Mustang. Car. It was a Mustang, so we were like, that's the color. Uh, Fox Searchlight, when that movie opened, you know, they just really took advantage of the, of the yellow. Uh, yeah. did, did that inform other things once you guys committed to the yellow van? Did that change the palette of the movie or anything else? Or no, was it just no. well, that was the signature? We wanted something when you had those wide shots in the desert or just the, this car, you could just pick it out. Yeah. You know, so. so I, I gotta ask, like, when the, the Oscar nominations were announced, were you up that morning? Did you, were you watching the announcements done? The... Uh, no, I remember my mom, you know, well, I realized this later, but my mom was getting a call from my publicist saying, you know, oh, I'll be only to be up for the announcements because press will want to speak with her, you know, if she gets nominated. And my mom was like, I'm not going to wake up my kid. And be like, here, watch and see if you get nominated, sweetheart. Like, let's watch it together. And if you don't, go back to bed, sweetheart. It's okay. Like, I mean, it's not, it's not in a healthy way. Of, you know, whatever. Um, so my mom was like, I'll wake up, and if she gets nominated, then I'll wake her up. Also very jarring, though, to have all of your siblings and your parents run into your room, and they're like screaming as though someone's been murdered. <laughs> And it's actually a positive thing, but they're like, you've been nominated for an Oscar. And I'm like, stop yelling at me, I'm sorry. Um, but I was very excited because there were all these like different award shows going on and I'm 10 years old, so I'm like, I do know the Oscars. That one I do know, so that's cool that I was nominated for an award that I knew what it was. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, and then I did like, and I was like, so do I get off of school today? Is it a good job, you know? She's like, no, but, you know. It's like to be at the Oscars after 13 months after the movie had its premiere in Sundance. I mean, what a, you know, what a, what a ride for that film to go from Sundance to opening to 100 mil to nominations to the Oscars in 13 months. What was it like to be there that day on February 25th, 2007? <laughs> Well, it was kind of mind blowing. I mean, the, this was our first movie, and just everything that happened was just surreal. And uh, you know, the, the sad truth: we did not look at the schedule for the Oscars, so we were out in the lobby when Alan. The bar. We're at the bar. At the bar. <laughs> when Alan got his award. Yeah. And and that was that was really. Frustrated, but yeah. we watched on the television. Like yeah. Yes. Oh, it was so horrible. I, 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 seriously, 16 years later, whatever, 18 years later, it's just. This is like a group therapy chat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. We're admitting to our pathetic. Uh, but I, I, I mean, I, I think it was fun, but I, I have to say, nothing kind of beat 
the experience at Sundance, and then um, at that time, Searchlight platform movies, so we got to go all around the country and premiere, you know, watch the kind of watch it with an audience. Band, yeah. And and that was probably the most rewarding experience of ever in, in you know making movies because I think to see different audiences seeing it for the first time is just. Yeah. It, those were the days, honestly. Yeah. You know, like you had the ArcLight, you know, where they had so many of these events and Q and A's and everything, and you know, so much has happened, obviously, in the last five years. But that's a whole other story. But uh, Abigail, what do you think the legacy is of Little Miss Sunshine? Something's only for me that question. <laughs> um, I don't. I, I don't know. I think that it's you know for me it's a really um, like like I've said you know I'm so honored to have been a part of it. I think that it has been um, a film that really champions the underdog and and it gives people who you know don't feel like they fit in, which nobody in the film really fits in with in their own family, you know what I mean? But it somehow works together, and I think that it, it, the responses that I've gotten from people over the many years is that it's given them more tolerance towards their family members, given more grace, you know, for for them to be them, their authentic selves, and I, and I hope that, you know, I think even, you know, seeing it, you know, I only sat for the last couple of minutes, sorry, um, but um, even seeing it, I think that it still resonates now, like it did 18 years ago, and I hope that that continues into the next generation, and I hope that when my children, I'm not pregnant or anything, um, but when I do have kids or something, I hope that, um, you know, it encourages them to be themselves, as cheesy as that sounds, I do think that that's the moral of the story and the legacy I personally would like to leave behind with it, but I can't speak for everybody else. You did a great job. You for me with that answer. Thank you. Right, right, what's your take on, on like, this, this legacy? Seriously? Yes. <laughs> Back. I, I, I don't know what else to say. That, that was lovely, and I, um, I, I, you know, I, I think the movie, um, uh, hopefully speaks for itself. I think different people take different things away from it. I, I love the dysfunction of that family. There's a through line of love throughout it that comes through and resonates, and, and that doesn't happen in movies very often, so that was lovely to be a part of. Bowery, Jonathan, Ted, close us out here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm handling well, so little. You know, it, it, it was um, just <laughs> such a gift and, you know, as a filmmaker, you, you kind of dream about this and the idea that you could get this group of people together and then do something that you love and, and that was fun in its own right, but then to have it, it just, again, having you all here in a movie theater, I, I'm, you know, you guys are the- Saturday night, too. Saturday night in the movies, this is what we should be doing, sharing movies. I think it's Sunday now, actually. <laughs> it is, it's your birthday. Uh, but um, anyway, thank you all for coming. It really means so much to us. Yeah.